Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by my channel. Certainly appreciate you all taking time out of your day to pay me a visit. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a painting video. Um, the last one I put out had some really goofy lines um, in the footage, and I finally figured out what that was. It's the fluorescent lights that I've got around my paint booth. Uh, apparently, my GoPros don't like that, even uh, uh, trying to change the anti-flicker setting. So, uh, I'm using my iPhone, um, and it looks like that's going to work out. So, today, we're going to be painting a, a six-inch musky crankbait, and we're going to be doing it in a uh, rock bass pattern. This is a, a DT-10 that I painted uh, a while back, but that's what we're going to be aiming to, to reproduce. So, that's, that's the goal. And uh, we're going to just do it on a full-size musky crankbait. I think it's a little bit easier to show you guys uh, on a larger bait. So that's what we're going to aim for. So step one, um, we're going to be taping uh, the bill. I just use regular old painter's tape for this. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just want to get that bill completely covered up. All right. Um, and really anytime I'm painting, I normally do at least two. Um, these musky crankbaits, I normally produce two at a time. Uh, things like this DT-10, I'm normally doing four at a time. Um, I think it's good to, to do multiple baits at once. Um, especially if you're kind of experimenting for the first time. Uh, it gives you a really good platform to kind of make some spur-of-the-moment changes. Um, something that you might want to, uh, you know, change going into the future. If you uh, want to, uh, you know, maybe do some red gill plates or do a different color than you normally do. Uh, doing multiple baits at once kind of gives you that, that freedom to be able to do that. Uh, I'm not going to be doing anything outside the norm for this video, but that's just kind of my helpful hint for whenever you're doing this yourself. Um, I do think it's nice being able to kind of do some spur-of-the-moment changes. All right, there's our cranks, all ready to go. So, um, first actual paint step we got to do is put a white base coat on that. And what I use for that is uh, just an opaque white uh, by Wicked. Uh, I like the Wicked series uh, for the opaque white. Just the standard opaque white by Cretex. It's really thick. I don't really think it sprays all that well. Um, but this Wicked uh, sprays a whole lot better. Good shake. You're going to fill this cup up because that is going to take all of it. Alright, and then we're just going to quickly layer on a white base coat.
All right, on to the second one. All right. Um, so just a note, um, I'm going to show you guys start to finish on this. The only thing that I'm going to not necessarily show you is me cleaning my brush um, between colors as well as heat setting. Um, so uh, I'll link my um, how I clean my airbrush. I'm using an, uh, a Wad of Neo as my uh, airbrush. I clean that uh, in between every color. I'll link the video on how to do that or at least the process I use. And then after every uh, color, I use a heat gun to uh, just heat set via the, the lures. So that's the only thing that I won't be showing you uh, at the uh, during this this process. All right. So um, the next part that I like doing now this is kind of an optional thing. Now that you've got a white base coat, you could just stick with the opaque white. Um, but what I like doing. And this is just something about me. I love pearlized colors. I'm gonna use a pearl white and uh, just give a, replace the opaque white with a pearlized white on the bottom. Not a really huge uh, noticeable thing. But once you put that uh, clear coat on, I, I really think that that, uh, that pearlized color really kind of pops. All I'm doing is, like, the bottom half of the bait. I kind of use that. It's not a lateral line, but well, I, I guess it is meant to be a lateral line on that fish, but... Half on down is all I'm doing because everything else above that is going to just be a completely different color. But in the right light, you can kind of see that, you know, the bottom half of that is a little bit more shiny compared to the top. Okay, so um, on to the next uh, color. We're going to be using a pearl satin gold. Um, this is kind of where we start getting into layering paint. So the pearl satin gold is a really good for the kind of lower third here. That's what we're going to be going for. And then uh, we'll be using a different um, copper color up for the, the top half. I'm just going to use kind of like an upward angle and uh, just kind of putting it on not super thick yet, at least not towards the, uh, the bottom. Pretty light on the trigger. know that it's necessary but I do enjoy uh, just doing the top half of the bait as well again this is all gonna get covered up with a darker color later on so you don't necessarily need to do it it's just something that I do for, for some reason I don't really know again whether it's necessary I do go a little bit heavier on uh, the top half, kind of darken it up a little.
All right, that one's all set. On to the next one. Okay, so we've got our two. So um, again, I just want to point out, normally when I'm making multiple baits like this, I like just kind of making some spur of the moment, you know, changes. We can tell that this one I did a little bit darker. This one I did a little bit lighter. Um, I didn't go as heavy on the top on this one and uh, definitely kept it lighter. And uh, we'll just kind of see how it plays out. You know, I generally don't make two of the same color patterns every single time. There's always a little bit of change uh, to see whether you like it. And sometimes, you know, you hate it and you decide, I'm never going to do that again. Um, but, uh, so for the next uh, layer that we're going to be putting on this, like I mentioned, um, we're going to be using a uh, pearl copper. Um, and again, I just like pearlized colors. I really think that they look nicer than just your standard colors. So uh, you certainly don't need to use pearlized. I just, uh, I'd say about a third of my uh, paint is pearlized. So that's what we're going to be using for this next set. So uh, this is going to be what's given us kind of that darker tone. So um, the rock bass that I normally catch um, that I've caught like in southern Wisconsin and up in Canada um, kind of have a lighter undertone and then kind of like a darker top half. Um, and that's what I'm going to be looking to uh, reproduce here. So. We're just kind of doing the upper half in this pearl copper. And you can kind of tell, you know, there is that subtle difference between the pearl satin and the copper. It, that copper just kind of stands out a little bit more. So that's kind of layered on there nice and thick. You just need to make sure that you don't layer it on too thick so that it starts running. You know, you can do multiple layers if you want to kind of thicken it up a little bit more. This is definitely where I put it on thick up on top, though. All right. That one's all done. So the last color to kind of bring this all home um, is black. Um, now it's not a pearl black. This time I actually am using a transparent black. Um, the reason I use transparent is I definitely want to not overpower what we've got on here. And uh, it's a little, well, it's not a little, it's a lot more forgiving. Uh, using a transparent color. Um, so if you do make a mistake, it's a little easier to kind of correct it um, or, you know, make it look better, <laughs> so to say. So, um, to me, the thing that kind of makes a rock bass a rock bass is that splotchy black pattern um, kind of like a crappie, it's not a perfect pattern every single time. You know, it's not like the the horizontal stripe lateral line on the largemouth bass. It's not the vertical stripes on a perch or a, a smallmouth bass. There's a lot more irregularities to it, and that's kind of what I really like about this rock bass pattern. So, you got a few options. So if you've kind of got your standard like coarse mesh, that coarse mesh, you can use that. This works really well for scale patterns as well as this splotch pattern. I don't like it though. It's too uniform. Again, I like uniqueness to every single one of the lures that I make. So instead of your standard coarse, that coarse, ugh, I can't 
can't say that 10 times straight, but. So something that I like using is some scrap lace pattern. Uh, so if you got family, friend that is a crafts maker or a person that sews, just go ask them, like, hey, you got some scrap lace? This is something that my mom had laying around. It's got this kind of flower pattern in there. It's got this other kind of flower pattern down there. It's got some um, other pattern down here. So this is actually a lot more versatile than uh, you might think. So uh, for this, so it's got, you know, like your normal coarse like scale part of it, but the flower pattern makes those splotches really stand out. So for the rock bass, I don't think that this just by itself is splotchy enough, so I double it up. And I kind of take a look at it and make sure that those flower patterns are kind of like spread out a little bit, kind of just like that. And then I just drape this over the lure, and then we're going to go to town. So these rock bass, you know, will be really heavy up on the top and kind of lighten up as you get to the bottom. So normally, some people will lose, use clips, you know, or alligator clips to kind of hold this in place. I'm efficient. I don't like spending that much time on it. I'm just going to hold it. It's part of the reason I use a glove. And then I'm going to just kind of have a downward angle and just start spraying. And you'll see that black kind of start showing up. And, you know, I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. But I, I'm not really going really heavy right now. I'm just kind of trying to get all over the place. And kind of after I feel like I've gotten everything, I'm going to go real heavy up on the top. like that. And then peel it right on off. Well, we went a little too heavy on that. That's okay. That's another reason why we use two lures. So we'll try to recreate this on the other side. That side's a little little better, but still, it's a little too thick. So, you know what? That's why we got two. So, rather than doubling this up, I'm going to triple it up. Or, I guess, actually, this probably is making it quadruple. Because I feel just too much black showed up on that one. So, we're going to triple this up, or quadruple this up. We'll try it again. See, this is all part of the experimentation. <laughs> so quadruple is too much. Let's remove one layer. We're down to a triple layer now. This is, again, all the more reason why I'm using a transparent black. It's a, it's a whole lot more forgiving. So that... That's fairly nice. I'm going to risk it. I'm going to put this back on here and darken up that middle just a little bit more. That, that I think, is pretty good. Go ahead and do the other side. So again, you know, both sides, I don't like both sides being uniform. I've never seen a fish with uniform scales and patterns. 
you know, at least not a fish of this size. You know, after they're a few years old, they should have some character to them. So, that's all we're doing is adding some character. So, um, one thing that I do like doing. So, one thing that you could do that I forgot to mention earlier. So, we used the pearl white as the base. And, again, uh, the rock bass that I've kind of caught. More have a whitish tone, but having a, a pearl silver as your, your bottom could work really well as well. Um, but one thing that I like doing is darkening up that black or that white just a little bit. And the way I do that is just really far away with this airbrush. I'm literally outside my my bro or uh, booth right now, and I'm just getting very easy on the trigger. Spray that black on the bottom. And that just adds a little bit of like freckles to it. Very, very subtle. I don't even know if you guys can see that. But all we're doing is just kind of darkening up that bottom. I think it adds just a little bit more realism. And again, this... Um, I've tried doing that technique with opaque, and it doesn't work nearly as well. One thing I just noticed, never really got the tail on that one, so let's go ahead and hit that. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, again... It's all kind of trial and error every single time. It's part of the reason how I make these videos, because when I made this, when I made this DT10 a few years or a few months ago, I didn't remember exactly how I did everything. I kind of had to look at it and was like, oh yeah, okay, that's that's how I did that. Part of making these videos is so I can go watch these later on and remember how I actually got to where I did, rather than having to second guess myself. So I'm gonna know next time go easy on the trigger, triple this up, don't just do a single, and uh, that's going to be a lot nicer. So, the last part is to really darken up the, uh, the top half of this. I'm going to kind of leave the jaw still that kind of um, copper gold color. Really easy on the trigger. I don't want I don't want this one super super black on the spine. Kind of want to bleed just a little bit over on the sides. Blend in that pattern just a little bit. But one thing that I do really want on rock bass is to make this eyelid or the eye area dark. So we're going to darken that up. Just like that. I'm going to call that one done. Now, there's going to be, since I kind of botched this one, um, or I made this one really special, really unique, whatever you want to call it. So over the weekend, I uh, picked up a new color that I'm pretty excited about that I want to try. Um, so we're going to experiment with that one. So, this is not groundbreaking um, experimentation by any means. And heck, uh, you guys can probably guess, I'm using black up on top like I did on the other one. This new one is just a pearlized version of black. I've never picked up this pearlized black before. Um, I really do like that transparent black, and I felt like I never really would use this. Um... I mainly bought this to experiment with some um, loon patterns for top water. 
we'll, we'll kind of see how that one goes later on. But Let's go ahead and try this pearl black up on top and see what that looks like. Okay, well, so this is part of the fun of experimenting, and, um, you know, I, part of the fun of watching other YouTube people do this, um, I can tell you what I like, what I don't like, and maybe save you guys, uh, from purchasing, you know, $7 worth of paint that, that you don't like. Um, I don't like the pearlized black on at least this pattern. Um, I think it's got a little bit too much of a silvery, silvery look to it. I don't really know if that shows up very well. Um, I think there's probably just a little bit too much of a glare for that to show out to you. But I, again, this just highlights why I like that transparent so much more. That transparent, you can see that when you're easy on the trigger, it just blends in a whole lot better, whereas this one's just, blah, it's there. Like, <laughs> there's, it's like an abrupt stop, you know, you can't really blend it in as easily as you can with the transparent. So, future forward, I will not be using that pearlized black on this pattern. So, alright, uh, our next thing we gotta go do is put some eyeballs on this. So, Let's go do that. All right, so next up for rock bass, signature thing to me about a rock bass, you gotta have red eyes. So we're gonna be popping some red eyeballs on these uh, these guys. So. Um, Whenever I'm putting eyeballs on, I'm using a, uh, a gel super glue. Yep, forgot I moved my camera. Gel super glue. Um, gel is really important. If you use a liquid one, even with you know the recessed eyeball area, I feel that the uh, the liquid just runs all over the bait. And the last thing you want is super glue on your paint or worse, on top of your eyeball. Uh, there's nothing that quite dulls the finish than super glue. So I just put a very small dab right kind of in the center. So the way that I put eyeballs on here, I call it the toothpick method. I've seen people use X-Acto knives. I've seen people use a whole bunch of different things. The toothpicks seem to work the best for me. So I take one toothpick and just kind of slip it underneath the eyeball and get it right on the tip of that eyeball. Again, sorry, forgot to move my camera. And then you take your other toothpick. So you first gently set that toothpick down and then you use the other toothpick to just gently, you're rolling the toothpick that has the eyeball on it, and then you're just kind of keeping that other toothpick there as a stationary object to kind of keep that eye, eyeball in place. And then I'll use the end that did not have super glue on it to push it around into place if need be. Just like that. So, uh, the next important step, take a rag Wipe off that super glue that was on the end of that toothpick. Because again, you don't want super glue anywhere on 
this eyeball. Because uh, it looks terrible once you get super glue on it. I cannot tell you how many baits I've ruined by getting super glue on top of the eye. So again, place the toothpick kind of right in the socket and then get the other toothpick on top of it and you're kind of rolling that other toothpick to kind of help that off and then boom bada bing you're right there then you just kind of push it down to make sure it's seated move it around if you need to so uh, with the gel um, and these larger eyeballs I just move right on I'll just flip the bait over if this is like a smaller eye with a smaller, um, yeah, just a smaller bait and a smaller eye, I might let it dry for about a minute before I start flipping things around to make sure that eyeball doesn't move around at all. So I just want to show you one other trick real quick. I purposely put in a little bit too much super glue on this eyeball. One other really nice thing with toothpicks, you can just kind of mop that up just a little bit, you know. You can move it around a little bit, and it will just kind of stay on the tip of that toothpick. And you can just kind of clean that up and take off that excess. And you can either throw the toothpick away or if you got a rag that you're going to throw away, just wipe it off. The great thing with these toothpicks, if you choose to not throw them away, which I would recommend don't throw them away, set them off to the side, and when you come paint the next day, you can still use the same toothpicks. These toothpicks I've been using for about two or three weeks now. This is probably like their 30th bait they put eyeballs on. I mean, toothpicks really aren't that expensive, but reduce, reuse, recycle, make Captain Planet happy. He is our hero, you know. So uh, I'm going to let those eyeballs uh, dry for, eh, I, don't know, I mean, like 10, 10 to 20 minutes. I typically let them dry. Um, and then we'll uh, take off the tape and then move on to clear coating. So a few months ago uh, for clear coating, I switched over to using KBS, which gets stored in a mason jar like this. This is actually um, a fresh mason mason jar. I uh, ran through one, I think there's a pint. I think I bought a, yeah, two pints and a quart. I bought a quart and um, these are pint uh, mason jars. This is a fresh one. This is the first time I've actually done one of these large um, crankbaits in uh, KBS. Uh, I was using DevCon 30 minute epoxy beforehand, um, which is okay, but I never really got the perfect um, finish that I was looking for. I've been much more impressed with KBS. Uh, very happy with that. So this is a, a clean mason jar. I got nothing in it. I was just kind of doing a test fit. <laughs> Unfortunately, this whole thing is not going to be able to get dipped in one go so I'm gonna have to tip it upside down so I'm gonna do a little bit of experimenting with you guys to see how I can best do that um, so when you're using KBS you typically have a, a wire that you hang it from and then you'll have a drip wire that you use as well 
So um, I've used paper clips. I've used this old metal, metal wire that I've got laying around. My plan is to, it's gonna get messy, but I'm gonna tie a wire on both ends, dip it one side, then quickly turn it over, dip the other side, and then chop the wire, and then let the bottom be the drip wire, and then hang it from the top. I think that's gonna work in theory. I really hope it actually works out. Well, okay, let's, uh, okay, that will work like that. That will work like that. And then we'll chop it, and then I think we'll work. All right, everyone. So we're gonna give this a try. If anyone wonders why my uh, voice is so muffled, whenever you're dealing with KBS, you need to make sure you're wearing a respirator like this. Stuff is really nasty. Um, when you get the KBS, you get a whole MSDS material safety data sheet of all the hazards that are involved with it. So. It's not something to be trifled with. Definitely recommend making sure you have the appropriate gear when you're working with uh, with KBS. Um, otherwise, if you don't want to deal with this, use a DevCon 30 minute epoxy and it's uh, nearly as good. All right, well, we're gonna go ahead and dip this and see, uh, see if my plan works. Oh man, okay, that's... About as far as we can get that without uh, overflowing the jar. Go ahead and pull that out. Let that drip. In hindsight, I probably should have dipped the head first, but let's go ahead and flip this around now and dip the other side. Get that all the way in. Go. And then I'm going to just flip this back around so that it drains off the tail. So I'm going to take my pliers. I'm going to snip this. All right, now I got a drip wire this into a hook. I have to make this into a bigger hook. And there we go. All right, let's do the other one. All right, we're going to try this again. I'm going to dip the head in first this time. we're going there. Dip this That drip wire up against the lure. All right, well, so this KBS uh, takes um, takes me and my setup about two days to dry. Um, I got really low humidity in this room since it's winter, and it's a high humidity cure, so. 
I'm like half the humidity uh, it's supposed to, so it takes a lot longer for this to, um, to dry. So I'm going to go ahead and seal this back up. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get new, new cellophane on that. All right, everyone, uh, it's been about five or six days since we uh, put this first coat of uh, KBS on. Uh, that last little segment, uh, battery died on my phone, uh, so it got cut off a little bit. But what I was saying is, uh, for musky baits like this, I'm going to be doing about four or five coats of KBS. And like I just said, it was about five to six days for this to uh, dry enough for me to be able to handle it. So it's going to take about five to six weeks for this one to get done um drying with all the different coats that's if i actually stay on top of it so i uh, just kind of wanted to show you what this finished product looks like uh even though you know i got a, a lot more layers to put on here uh it should kind of have that same uh finish and luster to it so this is the one that we use the pearl black on top and um you know it, it, it looks decent uh i like it this was uh, the one that, you know, I went a little too heavy on the sides. But really, again, once you put that clear coat on, I think it's it's really not not horrible. The clear coat really does make uh, things pop out pretty good. And um, I think as far as uh, rock bass go, I think this is pretty, pretty close. Um, I think I may have darkened, may have wanted to darken up this bottom just a little bit more but I'm pretty happy with this. And then the uh, the other one, just to show you a little bit of a difference. So this is the one that we use that transparent black on top. You can kind of tell that it just kind of fades and transitions a little bit better up on top. Um, but again, uh, I do like the overall look of this, and I think uh, it's a pretty good rock bass pattern. All right, guys, so it's been a few weeks still. Um, I've still got the uh, the rock bass crankbaits on the drying rack. I'm up to coat three or four, I think, right now. I've got uh, at least two more coats that I want to put on here, which is still going to be like another, another two or three weeks before I'm ready to uh, put hooks on this. But I do uh, want to get this video out for you all, and uh, I do want this to be a true start to finish how-to. So I'm going to take one of my UV Blaze uh, crankbaits that I painted last year. Um, I tore off the hooks and the split rings on it, so I'm going to show you guys how I do that. So uh, for these big 6-inch uh, six, uh, six crankbaits, I'm using 3 uh Eagle Claw hooks. Um, and I'm using hundred pound, uh, split rings and, um, I've, uh, I've landed a few musky on these and, uh, haven't had any issues. So, um, so, uh, I've got my trusty split ring pl uh, pliers and, uh, I'm gonna clear, clear that out real quick. That had some old, old crud on it. So you get your split ring, you get it started just like that. And then I always put the front split ring first on. And uh, I just kind of skate it on that way. I feel that that's kind of the safest way to get it started. Hopefully that's shown up okay with the light. Maybe let me bump this light up. I think that might be a little too much. So yeah, let's get it started like that. And then I just take normal pliers and I see which way that split ring starts and it's right in the eye right there. So I just grab it and then twist it perpendicular and then I just work it through so that it's on, just like that. So, and then for the actual hooks, what I'll do, again, I'll take my split ring with the split ring pliers Open that up kind of right by the start of the split ring. And then I'll take the hook and I'll just kind of jam it in there. And then I'll turn the hook perpendicular. And then that way, you know, it's still got just a little bit 
of that split ring started, and just like that. And then what it'll do, kind of work that just a little bit further down the split ring. And then what I'm gonna do is take my normal pliers. I'm gonna set it on that side. And then all I'm gonna do is get that. I don't really know how to explain that, but hopefully that's shown up for you. So you just slip it right on there. Again, turn it perpendicular, and then you just work it. And the way of doing that hook on there first, it's super safe. Uh, well, the asterisk being, you know, you're, it's never always completely safe when you're working with monster size hooks or any hooks in general. But I find doing it that way um, is the safest way. I've never buried a hook. I've uh, slipped a few times and um, kind of scratched myself with hooks, but I've never like had like an actual like hook penetrate skin, just kind of like tear skin before doing it this way. And that's extremely rare. My other big tip, whenever you're doing crankbaits, whether you know it's it's 1.5 square bills or these monster musky square bills, I always work at the front and go all the way to the tail. Because um, if you put your tail on first and you're screwing around with this middle one, you got to worry about that hook down there. And to me, I think that is going to result in more potential hooks in your hand. Dude. But doing it this way, I've been doing this for years, and I've never had an issue, a serious issue, I should say. So, again, we're going to do the same thing. Take our split ring pliers, put those on the split ring, and get it just opened up a little bit. And then take our hook and just kind of push it right on in there. You know, it doesn't, when you're doing it this method, it doesn't take a whole lot. And then you just kind of turn that hook parallel or perpendicular, just like that. And then take our pliers on the opposite side of where that split ring is started. And then the way that I hold this, you know, your hand's up here. This hook is completely out of the way. Um, again, just in my opinion, I've never had an issue doing it this way. And then um, you just line up that split ring until that head is in there, turn it perpendicular, and then just work it on there. And the hook is in there, and the split ring's on there. And boom, bada bing, you got yourself a crankbait ready to go. So, I know that this UV Blaze is not the, uh, the rock bass one that we had started with, but this uh, this still has quite a few more coats to go on. So um, just again to show you guys, this was the one that had the transparent top. I think this one turned out quite nice. This is the one that had the, uh, the pearlized black on top. I think this one turned out pretty good as well. You know, this one was the one that we kind of went a little heavy on. But I like how these uh, these lines kind of showed up from that uh that lace pattern so i can't really handle these all these much they're still a little tacky so i uh i hope you guys enjoyed this rock bass uh pattern i don't really hear people talk about rock bass all that much as like a forage but there's a plenty of places that go in wisconsin and in canada that have a lot of rock bass and those rock bass are really aggressive and uh, I do think they're a pretty important um, food diet for a lot of these big big bass and muskie. So hopefully you guys will give that a try and hopefully it works out for you. So thanks for hanging out with me and uh, I will see you all in the next video.